Hi, in this tutorial slash demo, I'm going to show you how I sometimes grade one piece bikini patterns. There's several ways to grade and it depends on what your grade rules are and what program you're using. Now using, I'm using the iPad graphic app program, so it wasn't designed for doing grading, but it can be done. And in my opinion, once you get good at it, you, it can be done just as fast and accurate as other programs out there. Uh, it's debatable, but that's what I think, because I used to use Lectra, but I don't have access to Lectra, so. All right, the first thing you wanna do is get your photos into your, onto your canvas to get uh, digitized because we need to grade from the digitized piece and to do that I already pre-recorded me doing it on the iPad so I'm going to show you from the iPad's point of view okay so we are first going to take a photo <clears throat> exactly perpendicular to the pattern and you can see there's a white plus sign and a yellow plus sign in the middle and that is to help you line up your iPad perpendicular to the floor. Um, there's also the grid lines too, so I like to make sure those are lined up with the grid lines on the um, pattern. So we just wanna make sure that plus sign lines up. Ah, shit, let's do it again. Now we want to do it with the front. You can also see that I have the fold line lined up with the mat underneath, and that's so I can do a half pattern this time, unlike what I did last time. So it will be mirrored on both sides. Okay, so once you have your pattern, um, your oak tags, your master patterns, whatever, blocks, um, pictures taken, you want to upload them onto your canvas. And for those of you who don't know, you go over here and you just pick your photos out of your album. Now, Let's see here. Now I want to start tracing the front pattern. I'm gonna move this out of the way for now. And put this one in the middle. Maybe I can make it bigger. You, It doesn't really matter the size of this photo yet because we are going to um, size it appropriately once it's digitized. Now, um, I know I show different methods of doing this. Every time I do a tutorial, I'll sh I probably show like different methods or different techniques. So what I wanna do first is go to layers over here. Um, it's pre-named because I just practiced before I started recording. Actually, I've recorded three or four times now and I keep redoing it because I say um or oops too much. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna call this photos. Enter. We have photos and we wanna lock that. And then uh, create a new layer and we're gonna call this one, um, this is a small, so I'm gonna call it the small. Press enter. Now I'm ready to trace this front pattern. Pick your pen tool. Um, we want the fill to be nothing and we can go in oh shoot so i start let's start with this line tool first shoot i blew it up okay so we're going to use the line tool start at the top once you get the line going Press your finger on the screen and it'll maintain its direction or the 270 degrees. Um, 
and I'm gonna want to scoot it over so I have it in the middle of the crotch down here. It doesn't look totally in the middle because when I took the photo, it wasn't completely perpendicular to the floor, which is kind of hard to do. And it is important that you get it as close as possible because let's say you took a photo of this pattern kind of like tilted, it would distort what the pattern looked like. It, kind of like if you lay a piece of paper on the floor and then get on your knees and look at it, it suddenly turns into like a hexagon or something. So, um, all right, I know I'm terrible at explaining things, so let's just see how well I do. Okay, it looks like it's a tiny bit, ew, just a little bit, okay. Now I'm just gonna copy one side with the pen tool. Okay, I'm gonna do a voiceover right here because my dog was snoring and people were honking out in the street and my I was making these weird mouth sounds, so let me just a voiceover so I don't annoy myself. <laughs> okay, so here you can see me tracing the pattern. Done. Um, it's a little bit sloppy, but it's okay for you to kind of trace a pattern sloppy and then go back and fix your anchor points and your angles. And some of you may notice that I'm not exactly getting the pattern correctly here, like the angles. And the more you do this, the more you will understand when it's okay and when it's not okay to leave mistakes or things that look like mistakes, but they're not really. So this pattern is weird to begin with. Um, it was a bikini I copied. I think I said this earlier in the video. It was a bikini I copied for a client like eight years ago or some shit like that. And it was like a Chinese bikini. It was terrible. But she wanted it, so I was like, yeah, whatever. And Oh shit, I gotta stop doing voiceover. Okay, now we can go back and make sure things are a little more accurate by hitting your direct select or let's call it like a hollow pointer. I haven't used uh, Illustrator in so long, I forgot what the pointers were called. I know there's, oh, I think it's called select and direct select. Now with your little handle right here, we can try and get this in. I don't, See, I don't like how it looks right there because when you grade it, it's gonna be this point right here is gonna be exaggerated. So, I'm going to try to smooth it out. Same right here. It looks like it's going to be a little weird. I think that's fine. Now, let's remove the center and use your selection tool. Now, we want to go to your paper clip, copy then paste in place or we'll go to your ruler in the upper right hand corner um let's see oh and then down here hit your uh, mirror button and now we are going to drag it across so once you start holding it you can put your finger again on your board and it will help it maintain its um what would you call it? It's path, it's direction. <laughs> now, let's take a look here. We can see that it's gonna be a little bit off right there. Um, it's not necessarily off, it's just that I was maybe at an angle when I took the photo. Which is okay, because this is, it's a bathing suit, it's forgiving. I know I always say you have to, you wanna be 100% accurate. And I think you do, but sometimes bikinis or something that's stretchable is a little bit more forgiving. And as you get better at patterns and sewing, you'll be able to tell which patterns are more forgiving and which ones are not. Now I'm gonna move this out of the way. And I'm gonna move this up here. And we're gonna move this one in. And repeat the same with this one. We're going to use the line selection. Um, we want to 
start the line, put your finger on your canvas and to maintain the line and I'm going to scoot it over. Okay, I think that's good. Now I'll select your pen tool. We want it transparent, which it is. And I'm going to start from the middle. Middle back. Oh, that almost worked. That would have been nice. It's it's nice to, or it's better to have as little amount, as few, uh, it's nice to have as few anchor points as possible because it's easier to grade. I shouldn't say easier, but I think it grades cleaner. If you can hear my dog in the background, he's dreaming right now. All right, this is going to be an interesting. You can go back and fix your anchor point accuracy later. Okay, now I'll hit your direct select and let's go back in and clean things up. I don't mind this right here. This uh, bothers me a little bit, but I don't want to take it in because I don't want this up here being kind of obtuse. Is that the word for it, obtuse? I don't want that angle I want it to be more at a right angle so that it sews when it's sewing when you're sewing it it will connect cleaner okay that's okay for me this one If you have the um, keyboard for the, your iPad Pro, if you hit Command Z, it'll undo your last move. All right, so let's move. I mean, not move. Let's get rid of this center. Okay, okay. get rid of that. This we're going to copy, paste in place. Go to your ruler. Flip horizontal. Now start moving it over and hold your finger on the canvas. All right, so there's another step. We have to, uh, let's go back to the photos layer. Oops. Oops. <laughs> I say oops a hundred times a day. Okay. We want to go back to layers, photos, unlock it, and move it. Oh my gosh. See, iPad Pro updated to where your pencil can now, instead of typing, you can just write in, like, photos or photos. Same thing. Notes. Notes. You can write. And I think it's cool, but it's hard to get used to. So... We're going to bring this down and lock it. Now go back to small. Now we have to uh, make sure we close um, the paths before we start bringing it to its regular size, its real size. Hit the direct select. Go there, uh, go, we, uh, damn it. 
I'm sorry, I'm so tired. Okay, so to close the path, we have two gaps. One there, so use your direct select and choose two, the two that are supposed to meet. It'll look like one, but there's actually two. Go to the ruler, path, um, join path. So if you zoom in, you'll be able to see. Okay, so I think it just combined it. Now we wanna do the same thing down here. We, and we wanna close the path. And a way to see if you did it right is to go to your fill and see if it fills. Okay, it did. Now we want that transparent. So do the same with your next one. Join the path. Close the path. Now we want to get these to the right size, the actual size, the real life size. And so what I did that I didn't mention before was I measured the pattern in some certain key areas so that I could experiment with um, getting these to their real life size in a different way. So what I did with the actual oak tag patterns, I measured from here, I measured from here, measured from here, and I measured from here, as well as from here to here. So I ultimately got the bounding box size and we can resize according to this dimension and this dimension. It sounds confusing, and it is, or maybe it's not. It was confusing to me when I first heard about it, but I'll show you what I mean. So let's select this one first. Now I've got the front, and I have my measurements in front of me. Now the Bounding box is 27.5 inches high by 13 points, 13 and 7 eighths wide, which is 13 point, no, actually it's, okay. The bounding box, oh, weird. So it looks like, okay, so this, box on the outside is its bounding box. And when I select everything, you can see that its bounding box is bounding in a box. <laughs> and according to my measurements, it's 27.5 inches high by 1375 It's 6.875 times two. So let me figure that out. Thirteen point seven five. So the bounding box is go to geometry, which is in the ruler section. Um, undersize first to see how accurate we are let's put the infinity sim symbol here and it's locking the aspect ratios which it just told me <laughs> now here we want to do 27.5 okay that didn't work they updated the iPad to do all the stuff and it doesn't work all the time 27.5 and it's telling me that it's 13, if it re kept its aspect ratios, it's 13.393. And so that's 13.4, but it's actually 13.75. So it's a little off. Oh, wait a minute. No, it actually is 13.5. So I'm gonna unlock the aspect ratio and put 13.5 now after I get those now I want to lock it so 
to see how accurate this is, let's move this person out of the way. Not a person, a thing. I'm going to go to the line tool and I want to measure certain um, measurements. So I know on my pattern across here was 13.58 or 13 and 5 eighths, which actually equals 13.625. You see it's actually 13.48. So I wanna to go to the ruler. I wanna find out 13.625, how far off I was. And it's not too far off, so I'm gonna keep it. Looks like it's not even an eighth of an inch, so that's negligible. Now the waistline is 11.813. So I'm gonna use the line tool again get its waist measurement. I'm gonna put my finger on the screen so I can maintain its levelness, I guess you could say. So I want 11.8125 and it's at 11.803-ish. And if I change this to 11.8125 or 11.8125, it's pretty much, I mean, look at that. It's that, yeah, it's pretty right on. Now the hip is gonna be, should be 13.5. 13.5, oh shit. <laughs> okay, now the crotch should be 2.75 and it's probably gonna be a little bigger because I've skewed a little bit. Now, this is important. I'm gonna to wanna to change this to be more accurate because a crotch, it's a really fine line between having like a weird baggy or like bunched up looking crotch. So I'm gonna put the measurement right in the middle. Use your direct select and just nudge these over. 2.75 inches is still a little wide for a crotch, and the reason why that is is because this pattern isn't, um, it's one I used for a client oh, many years ago, is a little bit off, but she brought us a bikini in that she wanted us to copy, and we copied it, and it was a bikini from China, and so it was just weird, but she wanted to keep it, so. All right. And then, let's see, and then from the neckline to the crotch, it's gonna be, should be 20 inches. Nineteen point nine four eight, and I'd say that's pretty damn good. So if we put it at 20, it's pretty much, it's right on there. It's like a 1 64th of an inch off, and I'm going to say that that's okay. Now, let's move on to the back. Oops. We want to use our select, not direct select. And its bounding box size is... Uh, uh, did I not write it down? Oh, it's 25.625 by 13.5. Okay. So we select it, make sure it get, gets its bounding box. 13.75 actually, it's 13.75 by 25.625. So we go to the ruler. Uh, let's lock the aspect ratio for now. It's height 25.625. And that brings its width to 13.8. But it's actually 13.75. So that's super close. Let's bring it to 13.75. Lock the aspect ratio. And let me just make sure the booty is 
10.625. Oh, and I also got to check the crotch. Ten point six four one. That's pretty close. The more practice you get, the more on you'll be when you take your photos. That's why I mean, I've maybe received two negative comments so far. Ten point six two five. Okay, so it's just a little. If you if that bothered you, you can go ahead and just bring it up. That's a quite a curve, but let's just leave it. So that's gonna that's gonna make the crotch look really light, like a like bubbly. But you know we're not here fixing the pattern. We're just showing how to grade. So don't complain about that either. All right, so this is pretty close. I can even go over here and make sure that the straps are gonna be close. So that. It probably looks like to you like that's not working, but it actually is because you, the sewing line. Is hold on, let me get you. The sewing line is actually right here. So that's where it's going to meet and it's it's close enough. It's, if this was actually for a client, I wouldn't say, oh, it's close enough. I would be anal and I would make sure it's perfect you know I've said this before it's important that you do perfect things for your client because they're paying for it so if I was paying a lot of money to get something done I would hope that they cared enough to do perfect things for me now that looks like it's pretty close too so as far as I can see we are good to go and to start grading what was I going to say I started saying something and then I forgot Huh, um, never mind. So let's, this is the size small. Select everything, go to your paper clip, copy, go to layers, we're gonna lock small, add a new layer, call it uh, medium. Oh my God. Let's try that again medium all right we did it enter and now we want to go back to the paper clip paste in place now we have our grades right on top select your direct selection arrow and to begin um well first let me just briefly go into how i'm going to grade this i want the sizes of this to be growing each size is going to be two inches different waist hip um, chest and three eighths of an inch growing um, lengthwise so with your direct select the crotch I want the crotch growing lengthwise just an eighth So I'm going to hold shift, arrow, now, this is, okay, this is a little buggy in the program, so you kind of have to eyeball it. Um, holding shift doesn't do good increments. It's, it's weird, actually. Um, Wait, did I lock the bottom? Okay. So... If you zoom out to like 100%, I think it'll do an eighth. You can see on top where it says the zoom aspect. I think if you do 100%, select your points, shift, and then move, I think it'll do an eighth. It looks like it's a little bit over an eighth. It's so frustrating, but you know, this was not meant to be grading. Now, all this up here, I want to move up. Oh, got a little rogue. 
anchor point. Select all these on top, and we want to do one fourth of an inch. So we want these moving up. about a fourth okay that's about a fourth right there we want the sides going out a half inch so I held shift on that and it looks like it was pretty accurate go to a hundred percent about hold shift one two three four Four. Is that four? One, two, three. Oh, we're at. So that's a half inch. Now I want. Um, this is going to get go out about an eighth. So old shift. Okay, that did not do an eighth. <laughs> oh, we got to go to a hundred percent. Shift. Okay, it looks like. Okay, that did an eighth. And we want to do the same thing over here. Go to 100, shift, and go out an eighth. So you can see what I mean about the weirdness. You can see how it's like you can see the transition right here. And I don't particularly like that. I'm not going to fix it right now. Um. But it would sew fine. It just wouldn't be 100% professional. I would end up, you know, before I even started digitizing this. I would have probably went into the pattern oops, and made sure that this was super perfect. Remember, the better you get at this, um, the faster you'll be. I know when I'm showing it, it seems frustratingly slow. But trust me, as you get better, it does get quicker. Okay, so I believe we have all points graded on here. Now we can move on to the back. hit the direct select um, start with the crotch and I think there's okay so there's two lines over here I'm gonna also want to grade the kind of like lower butt cheek anchor points as well so let's get this to we want to bring this down an eighth so go to 100% hold shift go down and that's about an eighth let me just yep that's an eighth now, um, the top we want going up a, a fourth. So we're going to select all this, go to 100%, shift up twice. Now let's make sure that's okay. So it's a little bit. Now oh, that's a fourth. Now we want to do the sides. Um, I'm not gonna, this butt point right here, not gonna grade that yet. I'm gonna do that one last. So go to 100%. We wanna do the sides at a half inch because that's equals two inches around. So shift, select on one, two, three, four. Okay. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's a little bit. <laughs> there we go. And then we want to do this side. So go to 100%. Now these butt points right here. I think, let's go to 100%. I think that will go out maybe an eighth or a fourth.
I think we'll keep it at an eight. These need to grade out too. We need to bring those out an eighth. And then this side will go out an eighth. All right, now select all. Copy, oops. Go to your paper clip, copy, go to your layers, lock medium, add a new layer, rename the layer, large. I'm at a weird angle right now, so it's kind of hard to write it perfectly. All right, so now we got large. Now we go to the paper clip. We're gonna paste in place, and now we're ready to grade the large. Hit your direct select. We're gonna start with the crotches. Go to 100%. Oh, and also I forgot. So you can also select everything you're gonna bring down if it's on the same path. So I've got both crotches plus the bottom butt cheek right here. Now we're gonna go to 100%. and bring it down an eighth. So we got all that down an eighth. Um, the top, we're gonna bring all this up. Oops. Um, what did I say? Oh, a fourth. So let's bring it to 100%. Ah, no, okay. What did I say? Okay, so all this. Bring it to 100%. Shift up twice. Okay, that's about a fourth. Um, gonna do the sides, go to 100%. Yikes, 100%. And what did we bring these out? I think we brought them out a fourth, an eighth. Yeah, we brought them out an eighth. So we'll bring this one out an eighth. Now, what else? Okay, we gotta do the, bring the straps out an eighth too. That's going out an eighth. That's going out an eighth. So it looks like we've got some uniform grading. Um, another thing that bothers me is the change here. I don't remember grading being so different like that. I remember it being a little bit more, uh, what do I say, accurate? Not accurate, but a little bit more uniform with the others, but I'm gonna leave it for now. It's a graphic app wasn't meant for grading, so it's still, all, a lot of this stuff still needs to be, you know, figured out. I can use it, oops, yikes, okay, hold on. We gotta be at 100% for it to accurately move an eighth. Okay, got that, and then we got that. So there we go. Now, this is the large. So, I feel like I'm talking to myself, which technically I am. Now, I'm gonna go to the photo section and let's just get that out of here. Um, unlock 
all of them. My printer, I've said it before, I'm going to say it again, and I'm going to say it a million more times. I have a large format pr printer of the Canyon in the Image ProGraph 4000. A little bit of a ridiculous machine to be using for just plotting, so... Um, but whatever. I can print up to 44 inches wide. So let's say I was going to print, uh, right now I have 36 inch paper in there. So let's do 36 inches wide and let's do 72. So that's two yards. It actually looks like we need three yards. Let's do 108. So that's three yards. Let's leave the small where it's at. Let's grab the medium. Oh, let's combine all of the, merge all the visible layers. Let's grab the medium, bring the medium down. Bring the medium down. Oh, actually, you know what? You know what I like to do? I, I like to copy all of it. Copy. Now I go in, because this is the nest. Now I go in and separate them. And then let me add to the height. Let's see. Um, probably gonna need ten more inches or so. Oops. And then I want to paste the nest down here. And the reason why I do that, I probably won't end up printing it. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I don't. Another thing about this program is it's hard to zoom in when it's all the way down there. So I'm gonna move it up here. Um, I like to get a good visual of what I'm working with in terms of my grades. So I like to bring the crotches together so I can see how it's grading how it's growing. Ugh. So you can see that we've got a nice uniform grade going on. And take all this and bring it to the bottom. I could show you how this prints on my printer, but I don't want to waste paper. Actually, I'll do a tutorial to where I'm actually doing something real, actually, and then I can show you my printing and the paper and all that. Um, now, once you have your paper set up, you can go in and um, label your patterns. Oops, what is going on? Ugh, so annoying. I'm just gonna name one, label one. YouTube, one piece. Front, cut one self. Let's say it was lined. I don't know. I'm making shit up. Cut oneself. Cut one lining. Size small. Um, and the company name. And then you would do the same with the back. And you'd want them all labeled before you printed. And you probably notice there's no um, notches. In bikinis, I don't use notches. It, it, when you're doing actual like mass production or producing or um, 
a lot of bikinis, which is what we do when we're doing a production. We do, obviously are making a lot, a lot of one thing. Um, notches are a waste of time and money, especially when you got really professional sewers. So I think notches is kind of more of a home sewing thing. If you ever have worked in a factory, a sewing factory, or seen one, they use as, excuse me, there's a hiccup. They use as little notches as possible. Um, sometimes. I've seen factories where they've used a lot. Um, all right. I think it looks good. Um, so my next tutorial, I think I'm going to do one more grading and then actually show the sewing. So we can actually test the patterns and see how well they're working. Sometimes patterns will work on paper and you'll be like, yeah, it looks good. But then you cut out your fabrics and you go to sew and then you start really seeing where you messed up. The truth will always come out in the sewing. I think that's, I think I'm done. Am I? Yeah, I am. <laughs>